So I'm here with Steven Rosenbaum. Um, I'm Esteban, Samsung Esteban on Twitter. So there's two Stevens here. So Esteban, or Esteban is in Spanish, and Steven, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I really want to read your book. I haven't read it, but curation is, I think, a big thing. People like Robert Scoble have been talking about it. You've been talking about it. We talked a little bit about how I said human curation earlier, and you said it, or I said manual curation, and you said it's actually human, human curation. curation. So what's the difference? So, you know, to me, what's gotten the internet to where it is, is computers. A lot of people put data in early on, and then algorithms, the lovely people at Google did an amazing job on PageRank. But now we're in a place where the volume of content on the web is growing so exponentially that if we don't actually change the way we find and sort and filter things, we're going to be overrun. And, and the good news is humans come to the rescue. So it's not going to be, at the end of the day, Google News is going to be what we're all going to read. I'm going to read your blog. I'm going to read your Twitter stream. I'm going to say, you know what, when I follow things about curation, Esteban really has a worldview and he knows people I don't know, and I'm going to knit together a collection of smart curators to talk to me. And there's just something really inspirational about knowing that people are the solution to the web's next iteration, not computers. So do you think that there's a curator in everybody, or is it just a select group of people that are interested in this and then the masses absorbs what they think? So maybe you have read the book. So, <laughs> so I talk about what I call the accidental curator. Okay. And what I mean by that is, you know, you may be a passionate foodie. Where do you, where do you live? I live in New Jersey. All right. So, you know, you may be the guy who knows the 10 awesome places to eat in your neighborhood and you share them with your friends on Facebook. And you don't think of yourself as a curator. You're not like waking up in the morning going, I need to publish today. But at the same time, the things that you share with your friends matter to you. I mean, you don't say, hey, here's a movie I just saw that's terrible, go see it. Right? So there, I think we all have some amount of recommendation in us. We all post on Yelp or on Amazon. I do think the curation is actually a job. And in fact, you know, you know, there are people that believe it's the next billion dollar industry. I, I think that's a big number. But I, but I do think you're going to see paid curators. And I think you're going to see editorial organizations that begin to have kind of curator-in-chief instead of editor-in-chief. So what do you think about all these sites like Storify and Curated By, where people can go and, you know, the average person can use it as a way of the next step in, uh, for like example, the, the Tumblrs and the Plusters of the world, there, those blogs, Twitter, now it's curating content from everywhere and then adding my notes, my personal thinking. Do you think these sites are going to be big, or is that part of that huge number you gave earlier? I think it's too early to say. I happen to know both those pieces of software, and I use them both and like them both for what they are. I think they're early. I think that you know one of the challenges of curating is, do I want you to curate 30 links a day, or do I want you to curate three? I mean, you know, I look at, at you know what's happening you know on the tablet in the tablet world and say to myself, in some ways, I'd like to have a newsletter organized around. South by Southwest that has a whole collection of different submitters that are people I trust. I don't know that I want individual, you know, like like paperly. I don't know if I want your all of your links as one document. Yeah, but but these is early days. I mean, the thing about curation is you're literally, you know, you're at the first inning of a long baseball game. So you're going to see some real innovation in the next two years. Okay. So I guess I will. will I want to make sure we talk a little bit about your book. What if you could. Uh, inspire people to come read it? Or is there something that you think is uh, different about this, uh, about how your book approaches curation? Or is, uh, is it like, how do you see yourself in the book? Is it your first view on curation? Is it your, uh, I don't know, I got lost there. Right, question, right. but. So, so I don't think that I'm an expert in curation. Okay. I think that I'm a good curator. So what this book is, is 70 smart people who I reached out to and said, tell me your story about what you do in curation. And then I knit it together using my personal story as kind of a, a path. But the decision I made in writing it was, you know, everybody goes and buys business books and then sets them by the newsstand and goes, you know, by the bedstand and goes, I should read this and then we go to sleep. I wanted this to be so much fun and so kind of accessible that people could literally read it as on the weekends for fun, enjoy the journey through it, and then come away understanding curation. So, you know, what I would say to your, your viewers is, you know, go and buy it at Amazon or Barnes and Noble, and if you don't like it, you know, I'll give you your money back because if it's not a fun read, then I made a mistake. And I think it is. I think it's pretty fun. Awesome. It's very nice to meet you. Nice meeting you.